Hello everybody and welcome to Into the Prey, Breaching the Chaos of the Church with Nick and Mary Franks. And tonight I'm joined by Tim, a friend of mine who I recently met and we're going to be having a conversation shortly. But before we get into that and to help hopefully frame the conversation a little bit, when I say breaching the chaos of the church, as folk who listen to this podcast will have heard myself and Mary say hundreds of times, literally, what do we mean? I remember having this conversation with some folk, um, some very good folk, at the time of starting this podcast, uh, breaching the chaos of the church. I can't remember how it went, but there was focus on the word breaching. Why the word breaching? And for anybody that knows knows me, you'll know that words are important and often the tampering with words can can lead us astray. And... I'd felt that the word breaching was important as regards to the whole purpose of this podcast, which is to see the church built up in love. Breaching the chaos of the church. What does that mean? Let me pull this up on my phone because I may have mentioned this before, but I'm pulling it up again now because I hope it's just going to remind folk, but also to help the conversation we're about to have tonight. Breach. Make a gap in, Tim will be in the background here, won't be able to see what everybody else is seeing, but that doesn't matter. Make a gap in or break through a wall, barrier or defence. The river is, the river has breached its bank, for example. And then the other one there is, is referencing a whale. And actually it's, it would, it would have been more like, I would have referred to a shark. Whenever I think of the word breach or breaching, I think of a shark doing its thing through the surface of the water. And the reason I'm laboring that tonight and mentioning it is because I'm joined by Tim tonight and we're going to have a conversation about the church and it will be an opportunity. It is an opportunity for Tim just to share something about his experiences of late. I don't know what kind of time frame Tim will probably tell us. But the point is this, is that in the breaching of these seemingly impenetrable walls of church division, church compromise, religiosity, the traditions of men trumping the realities of the kingdom of God, all of these kind of maze-like constructions that we've talked at length about, breaching that, central to that is testimony. I, I've got no doubt that when we share testimony, and sometimes it can be nerve-wracking, sometimes it can be painful, difficult, for whatever reason, it is significant in enabling other people to come to a place of sanity. Our our testimony is, some, is somebody else's sanity. So um, I'm just going to bring Tim in now because Tim will will share something of his testimony tonight and I'm trusting I have no doubt that it will be something that will be helpful It'll probably be helpful for Tim <laughs> he probably isn't aware yet but it probably will be for Tim just for you to share I think it's the sharing of our testimony is a sanity for somebody else but it I think it leads us on in our own personal sanity in the sharing of it so anyway all that said welcome Tim how are we oh thanks Nick thanks for having me yeah no I'm good thank you I'm good um yeah, it's just great to be be able to share some time with you on this. Yeah. And you're the Badger component of the Owl and Badger <laughs> podcast. Is that correct? Have I got that wrong? Yeah, no, you, you have got that correct. Yeah, so <laughs> um, I, I co-host a, a podcast with my, my friend Helen, and uh, we, we call it the Owl and Badger podcast, um, <laughs> to be honest, simply because that was... Uh, historic uh, nicknames and uh, it kind of stuck since there so it's a bit like once you once you got a name you kind of have to stick with it um, yeah so. you, you, you've wet our appetite there must be some kind of backstory there for your well, why, <laughs> why 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 badger tim um well i i think i think i probably had a um a somewhat justified reputation for for badgering um people for cakes and so <laughs> that's that's where that's where the badger came from, and and the thing is, I mean, many many of you know my friends at the time also had nicknames, but mine was the only one that seemed to stick. So, okay, yeah. fair enough. And and Helen's owl, wise owl, so that kind of okay. yeah. <laughs> I got, I got well, the short straw thing, Nick. <laughs> yeah, it, well, 
thank you and it, it was good for those who are listening rather than watching you'll be able to um, if you're interested in hearing the podcast the reason that Tim and Hal and I met recently was because of a kind invitation from from these guys to talk about the glorious view the new book and that kind of thing but in doing that it was it was an encouragement for me to li- to speak with other mature believers who are asking questions and that's the whole purpose of your podcast isn't it correct me if I'm wrong is to have a critical approach uh, a critical yeah. is that's right yeah yeah it kind of it, we, we we started it in um, August 2021 and it, we felt that there was much of what had happened since March 2020 since you know covid uh, struck if you like and mm-hmm. all the the kind of fallout from that both both in the church and in, in the country and we wanted to to sort of voice what we thought was important and what we think is important and we wanted to look at it very much as as best we were able to from a from a biblical worldview because it, it, our experience and I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit later on is in church is that it feels like so often we're, we're asleep and to, to what's happening in the world and so it's really it was really you know the podcast is very much about a wake-up call I suppose um it's mm. looking at current events um and trying to encourage other believers especially those who might feel kind of isolated in their views of which there mm. are many in the world, I think, uh, to encourage them to keep going and, and keep pursuing truth Indeed. And what about the uh, over the course of that time? Have there been any standout episodes or standout conversations, moments that you found or that others have found particularly helpful? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's been it's been really encouraging for Helen and myself, particularly to, to do like interview other people. So, Nick, you know, you're our most recent guest on, on, on the podcast. And that's been that's been fantastic. We've also chatted uh, with uh Jamie Franklin, who hosts the Reverend podcast, and then our first uh, in, uh, guest was um, Dave Brennan from Breathos. And uh, I think for for us, those have been particular standout things. But we also we also do, do a kind of combination of of talking about like recent news uh, and and applying sort of a biblical overview biblical christian biblical worldview to that and then we do a bit more of a deep dive into into various issues which um interest us and, and think that you know we think it's really important for people to to be considering uh, yeah. to, to a little lightly remind remind me of the where folk can go to listen because i'd encourage folk to who listen to into the pray to go ahead to the badger and owl is it the is it the badger and owl the let, owl let and the just, badger the owl and the badger. Let me let me just establish. Let me just sort this out in my head. I I, I end up going into you know bodger and badger. I don't know if you remember that in my head. It's yeah, just, it's that, the sh- that was very funny. That was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very very catchy theme tune which I won't um, put into our yeah. listeners' ears. But yeah, what's the URL or or the best place to find the podcast? Oh, okay. I mean, if you just if you just Google the Alan Badger podcast, uh, it should it should come up with um, various sources because the name is in th- is is fairly uh, u- unique. Um, or, mm-hmm. And just just search any of you know your favorite podcast app. So we we host a podcast through Podbean, but you'll also find it on iTunes. You'll find it on Google, Amazon, usual yeah. places. So, and we'll, we'll um, certainly make sure that the links for that are in this. Uh, and on oh. YouTube as well, so folk, please do go ahead and and do that. Um, maybe we can begin then, just by th- as we're the focus essentially of your what, what you guys spend time thinking and praying and, and talking and recording about is really the same um, as this podcast. Ultimately, we're talking about the glory of God. Ultimately, we're talking about what pleases Him and and grieves Him. What is true? What is not true? And central to that of course is the building up of the church in agape and with that in mind before we get to the specific focus that i'll i'll come to and how that relates to what i said a minute ago about breaching the penetrating this chaos of the church where where are you where are you at what what do you go to church are you um just give the listener a little bit of context if you would tim sure yeah i mean (laughs) I guess the, the 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 short history of of my Christian life, if you like, is is that I, I 
grew up in a, a Christian home. My, my dad was a Baptist minister. I've never known uh, a point in my life without um, Jesus in it. It was insofar as either being told about him or coming to experience him for myself. Um, I've been to a whole different range of churches in in my life so far. Um, <laughs> and currently I'm, I'm between a, a, a Baptist church and... Um, and uh, uh, an Amy church, um, so which which is a, 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 I suppose a I don't know how to describe it a subset of a Gafcon I think, um, which is a local local church where we get some get some good teaching in. So, but I don't I don't have a um, I don't have a particular denomination I I hold mm-hmm. fast to like, mm-hmm. um, and also just yeah I've started with Helen and some other other friends um a, a kind of a more of a more of a house church where where we where we meet you know every every few weeks or so to encourage one another to get some teaching yeah and we've all got we all got like teenagers so it's good for them to mm-hmm. see each other involved that way as well just try and build each other up and, and put foundations down i think yeah what was that other church that you referred to that's like a uh, Gafcon church yeah so so anglican uh anglican mission in England, I think it is Amy. I, so it's Amy, like a kind okay, of never heard of it. Um, uh, and it's yeah, it's, it's basically sits sits under Gafcon. So it's a a Anglican church, but without being, um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, without being under the Church of England. Yeah, Roger that. Uh, we might we might come back to Gafcon in a minute, and this is certainly not an interview per se. So feel free to. We're, we're having a con- we're, we're having a conversation here, aren't we? Um, but one thing just in my mind there, Tim, just as you referred to COVID and the timeline of your of your podcast, how in terms of just helping, like I suppose helping me and helping anyone else listen, in terms of before COVID, during, and then after, as we now are in this post COVID reality, where to la- large extents the church is exactly the same as it was before how yeah. how uh, what's changed in your life with regards to that immediately previous question i.e what church do you, are you a part of you know how has how have the last two or three years affected affected your articulation with church if that makes sense i think i think actually what's happened is it for what i have had an inkling to for many many years has started to become a reality Mm -hmm. Uh, and for me it's often about um when you when you so for example rewind quite a bit and and this might you know this might sound a bit outlandish but but you know in the late 90s i i was um you know, I was, just, I was. I remember going to a, a a Barry Smith conference. I don't know if you, you're familiar with Barry Smith. He's a New Zealander. He's he's passed away now, an evangelist. But he he would oft he'd be talking about. I suppose to put it simply, he'd talk about like in quotes end time type type thing. Mm-hmm. So he'd be saying about you know looking at what's happening in the financial markets, what's happening in the world, and and trying to sort of piece together that how that might fit with what we what we see in the Bible. And, and, and this is where I, I would always emphasize, you know, it's interesting p- potentially, but hold it lightly because it's very mm-hmm. easy to hold on to something like that and end up at a tangent and fall off a cliff somewhere. Yeah. And what, so kind of fast forward to, to COVID, there's these various things in the back of your mind. You think, Hmm, okay, will will that, will that come to pass or not? And then when the whole COVID thing hit, it was, it was very, it was like uh, very unexpected um, in terms of this sort of new reality, if you like, of not being able to go to church if you were being compliant, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Having to, if if you uh, happened to, be, if you were going to church, of course, but that's a separate yes, story. Yeah, if, if, you, if you were going to church, and and it was. Yeah, I suppose what I'm trying to say is it was very much it was very much like um, here here is a bunch of you know a theory that we've had for twenty or thirty years, and now elements of that are starting to actually happen, and 
I think, it, yeah, that's that's, I'm, and I'm still working through that. I'm still working through that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think for me, it was very much about realizing actually how 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 unprepared I was, if I'm honest, how unprepared yeah. I was for, for what happened in March 2020. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't good. That wasn't good. Yeah. yeah. Unprepared in for, uh, with regards, can you say any more about that? Yeah, I think, I think so if I think back to that time, um, I, I was I was an elder in a church then and I I remember that was it, I don't know what it was March the 22nd or 23rd or whatever it was when Boris Johnson was on TV and saying yeah. you know that started weekend, stay, yeah. at home, that, that, that stay at home and all that kind of thing and I remember going to church that evening and, and kind of grabbing all the bits of stuff we might need to, to, to live stream the service the following the following Sunday and I remember it was a, yeah was it a Sunday evening I think it was a Sunday evening was it or Monday evening whatever it was but it was dark and I was standing in the, I was I stood on the stage in our church and looking out and I was just thinking when are we going to be in here again mm-hmm. what what you know and so I wasn't I was I was in a mindset of compliance in a way that actually lifted a lid of of what was really going on which i think was almost like a spiritual slumber i was i was kind of personally you mean yeah personally and collectively as a church but definitely personally because i can only you know at the end of the day i've Mm. got a only i can only speak uh Mm -hmm. for myself um Mm. and uh, you know, I look back and I think, oh, I got that wrong. Uh, and so I think it was very much a case of of, of just going with it mm-hmm. and completely caught caught by caught by surprise, but caught out actually caught out because really I think what should have been burning in my heart at that point was we can't we've got to meet together. The body of Christ has got to be built up. We, 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 we've. This is, you know, this is important. This imperative to kind of just gather and and be mm. a physical body together. Mm-hmm. And it took me a long. It well, it took me quite a while to, to, for that to drop and to realize that I, you know that 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 lifted a lid, like I say, on 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 where I was at with things. Um, and then I think since then, you know, sort of going halfway through that year, I was really started to kind of, I suppose, push back against really what was, was a form of tyranny, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, again, because this context is important, isn't it? I think it helps to shed a bit of light on maybe what we touch on in, in just a minute or two. The church, is, the church that you experienced that sense of personally being unprepared in was a baptist church and you were an elder of that of that baptist church is that right and obviously we're we're talking about for folk who are listening outside of the uk we're talking about england um yeah i'm kind of tempted just to hang around here a little bit more to do with this unprepared that that march 2020 moment because um Because the totalitarian government situation was was for sure for as did catch many people unawares, mm-hmm. and I think Tim, you'll probably appreciate what I'm about to say now. Um, what I think probably has caught most people unawares, and still still does to this day, wasn't wasn't just that the churches were closed, and that the church wasn't really prepared for responding to that type of uh, governmental overstep because that is a factor Dis- the discriminatory mm. elements of that are, are a factor for sure and I've said that many times publicly but I don't think that's the main thing I think the main thing that the church were unprepared for was asking the question above that which is that really who who has closed the churches here mm. Mm. Yes. And, and I think when you then say quite rightly that this is the body of Christ we need to be meeting together which is of course the case um, 
it, it's then the question of if the church are continuing to meet, so in your case, whether that would have been to remain within in some churches cases they did that didn't they they stayed within their churches and in yeah. a sense just defied the government but the question the critical question is what what then happened with the with the gathering of the body of christ and in other words was there a repentant sobered change of posture was there an emphasis on waiting upon the lord was there even the beginning of entertaining the thought that this could have been the lord closing the churches in judgment which by the way, was for folk who, on the unlikely event that you don't know, we did a film on that very same weekend where we, that was the call to action of the film, Tim, I think you know that. So, yeah. 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 So, do you know what I mean? I, I think that's maybe a, 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 a longer conversation, but did that feature in your thinking personally? Because um, I'm guessing I, it didn't. Probably. No, it did. It, and and, th and this, is, this is where, you know, this is where, I think as Helen, Helen and myself, we kind of we came into contact with you and Mary through through your through your videos and your podcast, and then obviously chatting with you um, on on the Alan Badger as well. It, 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 this, I think, reality of what you say is 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 really is really sunk in, and and I I think you're you're right about it, um, and. I, I suppose this is, this is what is quite painful when when I look back is that it, it just shows I suppose how how unprepared I was mm -hmm. and and the fact that I didn't see that at the time isn't good you know and and like i said mean, i'm sure there are others plenty of others in the same position as myself but i can only speak for myself so i think mm. it, it's so it, it, yeah it's really helpful because we had i mean that you've, you've talked about this and, I th and we chatted about it as well on when when we spoke uh, last time but things like um songs like the blessing you mm. know that, that came out and there was this general sense that we were all in this together, which was at complete odds with the reality that what we should have been doing is saying, crumbs, mm -hmm. Lord, what have we done? How do we, what, what, just show us, just show us, please, Lord, where, where we've gone wrong here, that mm -hmm. we might repent, we might turn back, turn to you, do whatever's required, um mm -hmm. yeah and and i don't does that make sense so uh, yeah what you're of course of course the thing to encourage sense. the thing that um that strikes me though is as you very um humbly made the point that it wasn't good in this sense of being caught unawares by perhaps a number of different things different layers of things and that that wasn't good what what wouldn't have been good and, and indeed what isn't still g awfully it's so much worse than that is even after that being in that same state of unpreparedness mentally what you're i think what you're expressing tim is a um a being jolted awake and that mm. as a central part of that is this sense of gosh um you know and and so i think that is a wonderful thing it's a wonderful wonderful fruit of repentance in a sense that even that train of thought that i think if you pull out from this individual level of how you responded to things personally what should the church's response have been i think um in a sense it's encouraging for you but it's also it serves to shine a light on what is a, a really awful state of play generally again this breaching of the chaos and again why i'm wanting this uh, testimony to 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 shine brightly in the hope of other people having the same response and that's that's the reality is that although we are now what is it over three years mm. as mental yeah. as that is since that weekend when boris enlisted the nation this is still a time it's still an opportunity we are still currently as as i'm speaking as you and i are speaking now we are afforded this immense luxury of having time to prepare yes 
shifting yes. our thinking, shifting our heart, shifting our priorities, shifting, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so for folk listening, I hope what we now go into maybe in a little bit more detail is, is uh, will serve to help you with that. Ultimately, what we're saying, I think, though, is that it's the work of the spirit in us, isn't it? This is, this is not just that some of us are sharper than others or some of us are a bit more switched on. It's that it's grace when he, he just touches our hearts. And, yeah, we have different we, – we have a kind of open-hearted, open-mindedness, and that's that's really what I'm saying. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you want to pick up on any of that, anything there or – um, I, I, you know, I just, I just think it just, it just, it, it's just emphasising really that that we look back over the last three years and think, okay, you know, we, we've dropped the ball, and and this, this is, this is <laughs> to realise that is the first step, and then to actually know what to do is, 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 is you know, the mm. ne- next part. But also, I think that there's a bigger question that we should also be asking and say, well, what about the previous twenty years? What about the previous thirty years? What, because Mm-hmm. Where have we gone wrong there? Where have we gone wrong there? What, what what have we stopped doing that we should start doing again? What have we started doing that we should stop doing? And I think I think they, these are the conversations that we we should be having. It and yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Nick. We we do have this grace at the moment, this time to prepare, and I think wisdom should dictate that we look back over over the last few years, but even further than that to say okay we've gone wrong how do we how do we turn around and put yeah. it right yeah i think That's- our view of the, the i think our view of the church tim two of the main ways we get it i say we the church at large get things wrong is that there's this kind of myopic view of well my church experience hasn't been like that franks mm. and that's wrong because if we're thinking biblically, we should be thinking about the body of Christ, not about our congregation, our denomination, our movement, or whatever. We're thinking about the body of Christ, so it's wrong. Yeah. It's that myopic view, and the other the other one is that it that, that goes. I think it characterizes our petulant, stubborn, unwillingness to change and listen. Is a view of repentance based on decades rather than centuries yes you know and I, i've done a piece on this quite recently where jeremiah's um the context of of, Jer- of the of the exile into babylon was one of centuries you know it wasn't like there'd been a problem for just a few years there'd been a problem and such is the loving the, the loving steadfast love of the lord and being slow to anger and abounding in love such such is god's nature like that that centuries in a sense, can pile up where there is this compounding hardening of the of the of the corporate and individual heart, and so I, th- I think those two things probably we could we could dive into all of this all in much more depth. But perhaps what we could focus on just for our remaining time now is um, a comment that you'd made, Tim, and in our first conversation, and it was to do with your again your context of. Um, where you where you were at before in a sense before the world changed uh and specifically being on an eldership team of a baptist church do you want to talk about that dynamic because i think that that immediately and you've not said anything to me more than that but immediately i recognized something in my in what you said of courage and of pain and of difficulty and of travail and all these lament and all these things that we should be experiencing as a nationally repentant response um do you want to talk about that yeah sure i mean i think it would probably help if i give a little bit of context so um the the church i've been a part of for for a number of years um i think the 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 past the pastor at the time um really good guy and when we first 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 joined he was quite clear about his i think complementarian view Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know it was obviously himself and there was uh, another um man man at the church who was 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 supporting him as an assistant pastor and i think over over a a period of a, a few years um when the 
the assistant pastor left and there was a bit of a gap and and the church mm-hmm. was thinking about do we, do we appoint a, another pastor to come and support the, the lead pastor if you like there was a shift away from this complementarian view to more of an egalitarian view mm-hmm. and so uh, my, my wife and myself we, we were we were uncomfortable with with that um and uh, i think it was as I reflect back on this time, it was quite interesting because there was a being a Baptist church. So there's a lot of church members meetings. I'm sure you might appreciate. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, yeah, and, and uh, there, there was a there was a meeting where we were discussing the the appointment of um, a second a second minister, who in this case would would be a lady, and and one one of the the members at the time stood up in in the church members meeting and said, "Look." This is against God's word. Sorry, it's was that a lady that did that? No, no, it was a man. It was a man that stood up, right? Okay, yeah. He stood up, he stood up and said, "This is what you're doing is wrong. It's against. You're clearly going against what's very clearly put in God's word. Why mm-hmm. are you doing that?" And and there there wasn't there wasn't an answer for that. And unfortunately, at the time, there was other people in the church membership who kind of. Figuratively, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. told him to fight down, uh, mm-hmm. and the the the, the female um, assistant pastor was 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 voted in. Um, anyway, so fast fast forward a little bit further on, the church the church switched from a uh, having deacons to elders, and um, I was quite involved in the church, and then I was put forward as somebody to be considered as an elder. And then I joined. I joined the eldership team. And when I joined the eldership team, there were two female elders and three uh, male elders plus myself. Um, and I think it mm. was it was something which I held in tension is the best way I can describe it because I I thought I was I've always had the view that I think well the Bible seems quite straightforward on this particular issue of female elders. Um, but maybe I shouldn't let it become too big a thing and just, you know, get on with doing what I can do. And, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and there was this thing about holding that intention. Yeah. And the trouble with holding something in tension is it ultimately doesn't work. I don't think, at least not in my experience, there may be, there may be circumstances where that is possible, but, um, yeah. Well, can I chip in on that? Because yeah, the, the, yeah. the categories, like, um, there are some things to hold in tension. I'm, my mind is racing now to think of some examples. Um, and I think we've talked about that in the podcast that we, or at some point we've talked about, for, you know, secondary issues as opposed to... Uh, fellowship breaking issues so of course there are some things to take hold in tension but like you're saying tim surely not with the things that are plainly read and that's the problem isn't it you then you you then kind of have this kind of well everything can be held in tension if you if you don't if you don't have a if you don't have a plumb line, which of course the word of God is, then you could just take that view with everything. We'll hold everything in tension and we'll just swing this little, we'll go here with that and then this, with, and it just becomes what we have today. That's exactly what we have today, is this kind of subjective mess of there is no there is no um, objective truth. So what, what, yeah, you mentioned the shift there, Tim. You mentioned the shift that there was, um, how did that, out work was it just a a number of weeks or a number of months where that became more obvious in t- so no i mean i i i held i held that tension if you like for, for a number number of, of of years um um but i think it, sorry mate it, what what i meant there was the 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 shift in the church itself from being complementary to egalitarian um i think at the time, and this is this is going back quite a number of years now. I think at the time it's very much that that thing of if if the if the church leader supports something, then the church will by and large go along with it, even if there may be a few dissenting voices. So I think in the context of supporting complementarianism, 
that would be the case. But as soon as as soon as the um, the church leader then switches to an egalitarian view, mm-hmm. the church almost comes round saying, "Oh, finally, you know, we can we can do this properly. We can we can we can bring in you know." A, a, you know, female pastor. We can we can start to, you know, be the church that we're called to be. So it 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 switched from kind of it felt like switching from something which was tolerated is the wrong word. Yeah, but ba- background and yeah, yeah, to then something being celebrated. And then you know, there, there's people like myself and, and others in the church who who still questioned it and weren't comfortable with it. Uh, and as over time, over time, would actually think actually this this isn't right. I don't think, mm. Um, mm. and I think as well, it, it was worth pointing out that the church also adopted um, a more formal uh, CIO model, uh, which is a charitable incorporated organisation. So, in terms mm-hmm. of standing in the world, if you like, that was formalised, which which meant that the church had to have a board of trustees. And for this particular church context that I was in, the elders and the trustees were were separate, uh, separate people, which um, wow. actually a disaster. So yeah, wow. Um, we could we could go down that rabbit warren of different different yes. dis- dysfunctional realities, but let's just pick up on this this thing. Um, this is what I'm convinced of in terms of this egalitarian issue is that most people who hold an egalitarian issue uh, position wouldn't be able to pick up the Bible and show me or show you or anybody else who has a contrary conviction where where they're standing. Um, Mm. Now, of course, there will be others who who can and you can you can everybody can study up and i think that'd be a good thing to do actually you know the the classic passages in the new testament i'm thinking of some passage in or a verse or two in galatians and so on where they get but on a theological level was was the church was that explained to the church tim that's a really important question or did this shift kind of happen without any public acknowledgement of why there would be any sense of um lack of ease with that from some quarters was there any biblical teaching on it not properly no that there, there there was there was certainly the the passing round of what might be deemed helpful in quote articles which w- would come from certain seminaries in the states mm. which made out that um female elders are a biblically sound option but um when you when you look at those articles it, 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 and those pieces it feels very much like a kind of theological clutching at straws mm-hmm. um uh, but the problem was and the problem still is in my view that the level of theological maturity within the church certainly within my church experience is very low and so when something like this of, of the church leadership you mean no of the church family okay yeah. of the church members uh and, and like you know that's a generalization so of course there's going to be exceptions to that and um i'm not mm-hmm. trying to sound disparaging at all but it just what's the word i'm just I, trying to be honest about it um yeah and it, it, i don't think it should be that way it should be that way you know when i when you when you listen to somebody preach for example you don't just accept what they say because they're up the front you have your bible mm-hmm. in front of you okay mm-hmm. yeah so is that person are they can i see what they're showing me here in god's word yes or no mm-hmm. and we should be doing that when when there is a especially when there's a shift in stance in the church from something as dramatic as going from a complementarian view to an mm-hmm. egalitarian yeah. It should be a case of the church family saying, "Hold on a sec, mm-hmm. you know, well, two thousand years, this is this is being pretty yeah. much the standard. What? Yeah, why the change? What's influencing the change? But those questions, so, to my knowledge, were not asked, and they and they always should be. I think it's a good starting point, at least. Indeed. So for you, Tim, was that? Uh, uh, 
you mentioned the tension that you felt init- for a period that you were holding. Would you would you relate then this period in the COVID three year period, a uh, lockdowns and so on? Would you would you say that it was that was a, a critical issue that essentially brought you to a place of leaving or or, or not going back? Is that right? Um, so in, what, in, ter- in terms of my my eldership, if you like, and. Well, yeah, um, that and and presumably church membership as well. Well, uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still I'm still a member of the church. I mean, that's a slightly more um, complicated uh, yeah. story, I guess. But, but I'm just t- I'm just getting of, to know you. I'm just getting to know you. I I don't know, so forgive me. Um, so in ter- in terms of um, the eldership, I mean, it's 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 a long story with so many facets to it that we you know obviously not got time to but if it's to, if it's to kind of summarize it as briefly as i can essentially what happened we had we had lockdown and then there was a unfortunately there was a there was a it became clear that there was a um a serious issue that arose uh in terms of just relationship not getting on well yeah nothing not or just not get the pastor and the associate pastor were were having not working well together. Difficulties. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Working difficulties, which um, unfortunately resulted in them, them both leaving the church a year and a half later. It was unresolvable, tragically. Um, oh, dear. Throughout that whole episode, it, it. I think there was there was an element of. You know the, the difference between trustees and elders, and who who actually was kind of leading the church, if you like. There was there mm-hmm. was um, serious questions there, um, but for me, it ended up being the case that I was the only elder left. Um, towards when was this? In early twenty twenty one, um, and. By that point, the church had been through a great deal of pain. Mm. Um, it had been, it certainly for me personally, it had been really hard. Um, mm-hmm. The family had been really hard. And yeah, it was, a, it was a very, very painful time for the church. But I was hoping at that point with or with a new leadership team coming in that it would be that opportunity to kind of, you know, start afresh and, and build up despite the sadness. And the sadness, you know, for me certainly was, you know, the, the lead pastor, the, the 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 chap who was there when I first went to the church, it was mm. deep sadness going, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and and actually for the for the for the the lady who came in as the associate pastor, she clearly had wonderful giftings, but I just being an elder, I don't think was one of them, uh, mm-hmm. and you know that that was there was sadness there as well. Well, gift gifting doesn't necessarily rubber stamp um, calling, does it? And in that sense, yeah. yeah. Um, so, am I right in saying then that basically you felt on a on a conscience level that was your that was your time to call it a day from the position of elder? Um, but that was no. that was the start. That, that was no, 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 no. It went no. So I because at that point I was I, I was the the only elder left, if you like. So there's, the team kind of was rebuilt, um, and a, another another elder came on board. Um, so there was two of us, and um, but it but it soon became clear that there was a quite a different difference of view about how how a church should be led, what what actually mm. meant to be an elder, um, mm-hmm. that was problematic. I want to try and rescue. I want to try and rescue us both here from the quagmire of um, d- diving too deeply into the detail here, because it can be depressing. It can be difficult and not particularly yeah. Fruit, yeah. fruitful for anybody listening. But the point, the point that's being made, I think here, and again, why I wanted us to talk about this is that essentially, if we had to boil all this down, is that you weren't on a conscience level before the Lord. You weren't in agreement with something theologically, th- theological, something to do with God and what he says about hi- himself, what he says about his people and, and 
uh, spiritual leadership and authority and so on and as, as a result of that something had to change and i that's 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 yeah. what we're saying isn't it yeah in in, in a nutshell yeah. and i think that's i think that's very important because coming full circle i'm not sure what time we're on here um but that's what i want folk to hear is that in your expression of that two or three year period in that sense of being caught unawares or unprepared is that there have been changes since. Yes. That's what yeah. you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, for, for me, I, I had to, it just got to the point where I had to step away from it, um, which was a, was a, was a relief actually. Um, and, and, and I, th- I think, yeah, certainly it's, it's been, you know, it's been good to be able to not feel like I'm having to compromise. That tension isn't there anymore. That trying to hold th- hold things in tension. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I mean, and it just, it just, it, it actually came, it came to a kind of a head, if you like, with the whole issue of, of female elders in our church. Um, and so mm-hmm. that, that was, that was one of the kind of the main things because I was I just raised the point and said, look, you know, we I think it's a church. We need to be clear about if we're going to have female elders. Well, we've got to be clear about the biblical mandate to do that. Yeah. And if we're not going to have female elders. We need to be clear about the biblical mandate to not do that. So which is mm-hmm. it going to be? Um, mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it, it you know, we didn't we didn't do that. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. But but it was it was it was a it was a relief, but it was a sad relief if I'm honest. Yeah, it was yeah. sad. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have ever expected to be joyful. Um, and we we are talking here about personal, the the personal level between you and the Lord in prayer, overlapping mm. into a role in a church, but then also overlapping into the role as an elder with responsibility, spiritual responsibility, and so on. So it's complex. Um, but you, without wanting to put too fine a point on it, you obviously felt and feel that it's sufficiently serious um, an issue for it to not be something that is held in tension. Like I was saying a few minutes ago, like there are some things that can be in in all good conscience held in tension, but this isn't one of those. I, I yeah, I would agree. I, I that's what that's certainly that's certainly what I've what I've learnt is that um, yeah, I mean to put it a different way for this particular topic of um whether you have female elders in the church or not s- some people say oh it doesn't you know it doesn't really matter as long as long as the church is doing you know good things as long as being the church it doesn't full, it doesn't really people. matter classic yeah so it, it's it, it's been like well you know as long as we could have female elders because god is god has called that person to this ministry or got or or called this lady to that, that particular position and so my, I th- the best way for me, I'd sum it up is: look, either, either this issue of of women elders is is a non-issue, yes, or it's a massive issue. Yeah, what it is is a take it or leave it issue. And yeah. and looking back, uh, I think that's where the difficulty lies: is when we have things that are clear in scripture. And then we make it into a take it or leave it issue, and it. I don't think that works, and, and I'm not surprised it doesn't work either. But that's hard. That's yeah. hard. It's costly, very costly to to take that view, and and it, and it can be, I think, misinterpreted all too easily by by people as well. Um, by taking Which, a stance, by taking a, a line on something, you mean? Yeah. So, 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 you know, people saying what? So, so, what? You know, th- there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be, women shouldn't be able to to minister in any way in terms of, you know, it could be leading a particular group in church, for example, or something like that. You, you completely against women doing anything, are you? It's like, well, no, not not saying that because mm-hmm. it doesn't appear to be what the Bible teaches. Mm-hmm. But what the Bible does say mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. that. For an elder of a church, it should be a man, mm. and that's not me saying this. It's just plain reading of scripture. So yeah. either that's outdated and wrong, in which case, well, <laughs> what else is outdated and wrong then? Um, or it's right. 
in which yeah. case why are we doing it yeah so uh, yeah and and does that make sense i mean it's... it does the the words of c.s lewis are ringing in my ears which is there's one thing that christianity can't be it's moderately important <laughs> yes yeah yeah and I think that is it is maybe well it certainly isn't for a conversation on now but I think it begins I think the 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 way you've just described that is all too familiar and I'm sure for folk listening and watching it's a very familiar attitude where it's it's just a sense of incredulity that that you'd be that you would take a line on something that is scriptural and that the view from supposedly mature people in their 50s, 60s, whatever is, what does it matter? You know, is look at her gifting, look at her track record or whatever. And it just reveals a level of, um, I'm just going to say it, it, it almost reveals a sense of, is this person, is this the same religion, Tim? Now, I'm not asking you to comment on anybody at your at that church or people that you knew in that conversation but when it comes to see my understanding of faith is that you it it, it hinges on the word of god doesn't it romans 10 yes. 9 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and that in the confession of the mouth from from the belief and faith of the heart that that's what it means to be a christian a disciple of jesus christ and yet and yet, as you've just expressed, the attitude from so many people with regards to the word of God seems to be not that. In other, in other words, there doesn't seem to be this fundamental submission to the word of God. And so it, it makes it very difficult to then know how to begin to help folk because there is just a very different fundamental standard. Does that make sense? It, it it does it does make sense and and i think i think this is maybe well certainly i think this is why we see the gospel often reduced to god loves you yeah which, love is love yeah. yeah 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 absolutely which, which, which he does but that's that's half of the truth mm -hmm. and i think this is this is where this is where the the, the road from this kind of lack of theology if you like or well, not lack of theology but lack of biblical rigor it, it can so often end up which is which is really tragic um and i know full well that you know the people can yeah. massively disagree with that but for mm -hmm. me personally i've spent a, many years wrestling with this very this particular subject and mm. I've always come to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. It seems inescapable to me. Yeah. I don't know. And again, I don't know who's listening to this conversation, but I, I can't, I don't think anybody can stand. Um, oh, just by the way, uh, Tim, what would your, what would the, presume, I'm assuming that the church that we're talking about here wouldn't be pro LGBT. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't think so. Um, saying that, I mean, my the last time the last time I preached, the last time I preached actually, full stop, was was almost a year ago, um, and uh, that in 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 that you know in that sermon, I did make it quite clear about. Um, I mentioned the whole LGBT issue a couple of times. I, I brought into mm -hmm. the fact that boys both at secondary school were kind of face this on sort of indoctrination mm. and how they kind of come home and have to sort of figuratively vomit it up you know to because <laughs> that's the reality i'm afraid that's yeah. the brutal reality of where it's at now yeah uh, and and in many ways it was a it was a difficult difficult sermon for the church to hear but uh, it certainly it certainly unfortunately seemed to confirm amongst some people that I wasn't I wasn't really welcome as an elder uh, yeah. to put it like mate that. there's there's so there's so much here this is a thin it's a thin end of the wedge and that's why I only, I mentioned it and just in passing um I obviously assumed wrongly in that case but my my point being is that it is the thin end of the wedge often and it's a slippery slope etc cetera, etc cetera. 
when you abandon that childlike submission to the word of God and you know essentially it's, that's what it means isn't it I mean I'm, I'm not sure there's much more to say in terms of that's that's my I'm 43 now my understanding of what it means to be a disciple is I am joyfully submitted to Jesus um, let me read this Psalm 43 and just one verse that nearly brought me to tears just earlier before we started speaking Psalm 43 I was going to bring it up for everybody to see, but don't worry. It's just this one verse here. This is this is wonderful. In the psalmist's dark night of the soul, so to speak, eventually he's able to come through the clearing of the mist to say in verse 4 of Psalm 43, Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O oh God, my God, then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. That's what it means to be submitted. That's what it means to be a Christian, to be a disciple, is for him to be our exceeding joy. And that therefore, when it comes to whatever issue it is, well, I'm, I'm a lady, but I've got all these gifts. What do I do with... There is exceeding joy in being submitted to his lordship about that specific issue. I, I, I think I might be a boy and actually I'm a girl. What do I do? You, there is an exceeding joy in being submitted to the wisdom of the word of God and the people of God, isn't there? That That's the standard. That's the New Testament standard. And yet what you're describing, Tim, on so many different levels <laughs> from that church, which is a microcosm of the chaos of the church, is is not that. That the exceeding joy is not is not for him for God is not there. That's you, that's not being judgmental. It's it's simply the case that if you're not submitted to the word of God, then the, how can there be the the joy of that that joy of of the Lord Himself there? And so then you begin to ask, well, what is what is the joy? What's 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 fueling all of this? Love is love. Mm. And you're not fit to be an elder, mate. If you say something different to that, you're not. We don't want you as an elder in this church. And actually, Tim, you're an immense blessing to that church because you were bringing the word of the Lord. You were bringing truth. What grace and mercy that is! But we don't want it. It's like the beginning of the Gospel of John. We don't. They they love darkness instead of light. Um, our time's gone, and I wanted to finish with that psalm because, for this reason, it's because. Sometimes standing for truth is excruciatingly painful. And without wanting to sound like a prophet of doom, I think that's only going to get worse. If your heart is set toward him, he won't leave you in positions of tension that are unacceptable tension to him. And, you know, we see it in the news just today, Tim. I'm sure you've seen headlines today outside Oxford University. Uh, union you know just the just the vociferous livid boiling you know satan loves homosexuality and transgender he loves it mm. and i would dare say in the same sentence of that and i would and i have and i will and i'll continue to he loves egalitarianism because mm. it hamstrings the spiritual the spiritual leadership and authority that he has given to the church um, yeah. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to say in closing, but I think thank you for your uh, transparency, your honesty, and your courage. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's 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 good to, it's good to chat these things through, and it's it's good to be able to kind of um, art articulate it. Um, and um, yeah, it's just, and we want. To, I, I think just that opportunity to build the body of, of Christ up, you know, because the, the church I've been a part of for a number of years now, you know, they, they, they need building up and, and um, yeah, just have to pray that that happens. Yeah. And that the people of God have the courage to not, because it's a miserable existence, um, tolerating compromise and people can and do do it for decades.
it's miserable yeah. and god's not blessed he's not glorified there's no power in it and you can spend a life doing that should we pray brother yeah yeah go for it mm, father we, we just we are wanting to think about that verse and um the struggle of that of the sons of Korah to to hope in God that a, a time that they were able to remember of having previously gone to the house of the of of God to worship and with the throng and amongst the multitude to be able to to hope in God that that will be again something restored. And our prayer tonight, as we've talked about this, is that testimony of um, a life provoked by your spirit unto change, that that would be an encouragement to others, maybe over the very same issue. And Lord, our prayer tonight is that the church would be built up and that the church would come to see the seriousness of some of these things that we've talked about and that they're not to be tolerated, they're unacceptable. And or what can we pray other than that you would, by your spirit, reveal to your body the reality of these things, the reality of the situation, the state of play. And we do pray for this specific church now that you would bring conviction. We can't do that, Lord. We don't seek to or hope to, but we do pray that you would bring conviction an arresting of heart and mind and even of sleep of men and women who are in disobedience to your word and to your spirit. And Lord, I pray tonight, especially for anybody who is struggling with that tension, struggling with the um, perhaps recognizing the, the sense of reprisal or consequence, or whatever level, whether in the church or in work or whatever it is, Lord, that you would bring that sweet sense of conviction to lead away from compromise and the relief that comes and the shalom that comes only in that place of obedience. So Lord, I, I pray for Tim and his family now. I pray for this church. I pray for the relationships there and ask, Lord, that your will would be done and that you would pour grace into situations that are difficult, but that, Lord, there would be no compromise. We pray now for your glory, Father, in the name of of Jesus, you're our great joy. We love you and we worship you. And Lord, there is nothing, Lord, there is nothing that we can rightfully say no to you about. And I pray that that would be a simple childlike conviction for the church in this nation at this time. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.